Welcome to lecture one. In this lecture, we will introduce complex numbers and use them to define Euler's formula. This lecture will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we will introduce what is a complex number and define how algebra should be done when these numbers are included. In the second part, we will introduce Euler's formula, which is used to express complex numbers in polar coordinates either as a complex exponential or with trigonometric functions. Complex numbers involve the imaginary unit, denoted as the lowercase i, where i is equal to the square root of negative 1. It can also be written as i squared is equal to negative 1. Complex numbers arise naturally when solving certain quadratic equations. For example, the two solutions to z squared minus 2z plus 5 is equal to 0 is z is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 which can otherwise be expressed as z is equal to 1 plus or minus 2 times i. When trying to understand where complex numbers fit into our understanding of numbers, recall that when we think about real numbers, we typically place them along a line. Usually this is called a number line. When we include complex numbers, this number line becomes two-dimensional, as illustrated by the figure on the right. One axis, the x-axis, is the original real number line, while the perpendicular axis, the y-axis, is the imaginary direction. Now, instead of numbers simply being along a single linear continuum, they sit on a two-dimensional plane where they are expressed as vectors. These vectors are denoted as z and are generally written as x plus i times y, where x is the real component of z while y is the imaginary component of z. Addition and multiplication of complex numbers follow vector addition and multiplication rules. For example, if we are adding or subtracting two complex numbers, we will add or subtract their real and imaginary parts separately. For example, if z1 is equal to 2 plus 3i and z2 is equal to 1 minus 4i, then z1 minus z2 is equal to 1 plus 7i. For multiplication, we will multiply the two numbers as binomials and use the fact that i squared is equal to negative 1. For example, if z1 is equal to 2 minus i and z2 is equal to minus 3 plus 2i, then z1 times z2 is equal to minus 4 plus 7i. A very important quantity involving complex numbers is called the complex conjugate and is denoted as z star. The complex conjugate of an imaginary number z is formed by exchanging all instances of i with negative i. For example, if a complex number z is equal to x plus i times y, then its complex conjugate z star is equal to x minus i times y. A property of the complex conjugate of a complex number is that when a complex number is multiplied by its complex conjugate, the result is a real number. For example, z times z star is equal to x plus i times y, all times x minus i times y, and that's equal to x squared plus y squared, which is a real number. The square root of a complex number times its conjugate is called the magnitude or absolute value of z, and is denoted as z inside two vertical lines. All right, so let's do a couple of quick examples so that we can get a better grasp on how to do multiplication, addition, as well as finding complex conjugates of complex numbers. And so in this example, what we've defined is a number z1 being a complex number, and that's equal to 2 plus 3i. And we have a second complex number, z2, which is equal to 4 minus i. And what we're going to find is the subtraction of these two numbers, z1 minus z2, the multiplication of these two numbers, z1 times z2, and what happens when we multiply z1 with its complex conjugate, z1 star. Starting first with the subtraction, z1 minus z2, what we'll do is we'll just immediately substitute in for those numbers. So z1 is 2 plus 3i, and from that we're going to subtract off 4 minus i. And so because we're going to treat this like a vector, what we're going to do is group together the terms that don't have i's and terms that do have i's. So if I group together the terms that do not have i's, that's 2 
minus 4 because I distribute the minus sign in. And then I'm also going to be grouping together the terms that have i's. So I'm going to have 3i minus minus, so plus i. And now I'm just going to simply do the correct um, operation with these terms. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and 3i plus i gives me 4i. So the subtraction of z1 minus z2 is equal to minus 2 plus 4i. Moving on to the second one, where we've got z1 times z2. In this case, after I substitute in, so I've got z1 is equal to 2 plus 3i, and that's going to be multiplied by 4 minus i. I'm just going to FOIL this out. So that means I'm going to have 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2i, plus 12i, minus 3i squared. And so in this case, I can now do the subtraction with my terms that have to do with i. So I have 8 plus 10i. And over here, I still have minus 3. And recall that i squared, well, that's equal to negative 1. And so instead of carrying this i squared term, I can actually just turn it back into a real number. And so because I've got minus 3 times minus 1 gives me plus 3, and I add that to 8, then my final answer is 11 plus 10i. The final example here is when we multiply z1 by its complex conjugate z1 star. So substituting in for z1, I get again 2 plus 3i. And in this case, when we create a complex conjugate of some complex number, all we do is we replace any term that has i in it with negative i. And that means then that the complex conjugate of z1 is equal to 2 minus 3i. And so again, you can see that z1 here has plus 3i. And in the complex conjugate term, I've just flipped the sign, and I've just made it minus 3i. But now all I do is I just do the same multiplication type operation that I just did a second ago. So I'm going to have 4 minus 6i plus 6i minus 9i squared. And so we can see right away that I have plus 6i and minus 6i, and so those two terms cancel each other out. And what that means, then I'm left with 4. And here I'm going to still subtract off 9 times i squared, which I will then substitute in the minus 1 again. And I've got minus 9 times minus 1 gives me plus 9, so 4 plus 9 is 13. And you'll note here that just like I said before during the slide was that when I multiply a complex number by its complex conjugate, what I'm going to get in the end is a real number, meaning it doesn't have any complex part. And we can see here in the answer that there's no complex part, so there's no i term that's involved here anymore. And what that means is that this thing has now become a real number.